Right now, brought to you by Ford in your North Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. It is our Dallas Cowboys Executive Vice President, Stephen Jones. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, guys. How you doing? Man, we're doing fantastic. How much better did Thanksgiving turn out to be because you guys won versus you lost? Not that you don't want to be with your family and everything like that, but I get in a bad mood when my teams lose. Well, there's no doubt about it, and it makes us uh, win on that Thanksgiving than the alternative. So it was uh, really a, uh, you know, really enjoyed being with our family and being obviously uh, thankful and grateful for uh, all the blessings we have and certainly uh, uh, fired up about the team in the meantime about, uh, one, what we've done up to this point, but, two, uh, you know, that we can continue to get better and and really, uh, you know, have a chance to do something special this year. You know, the, uh, the, that game, I was just telling Kevin a few moments ago, I feel like that's my favorite Thanksgiving game that I've watched. And, my, and I've been a Cowboys fan my whole life, Stephen. So that one, where does that rank for you in the way that that just wrapped up real fast with a lot of offensive uh, points and then the Deron Bland interception to add on to that? Well, it was a, a really close game, as you know. I mean, it was, uh, you know, right there tight through the uh, almost the end of the third quarter. I think it was the end of the third quarter before we finally, uh, you know, broke it open. And uh, so it really made for a great, uh, great television, great game for fans across the country to watch. I think we, uh, one of the most highly watched nine Super Bowl games ever, maybe the third most watched. And, uh, you know, people really enjoyed watching the game. And, and then when we did break it open, I think, uh, you know, the festivities and uh, seeing Deron Bland uh, break an all-time NFL record, which is so rare. And, and then, of course, uh, you know, just seeing uh, some of the guys out there, whether it's the long pass to Turpin or uh, see some of the great play, uh, plays that were being made out there by C.D. Lamb and, of course, Dak leading the way was, uh, you know, certainly uh, enjoyable for fans around the country, much less Cowboy fans to watch. <laughs> yeah, Steven, you know, Kevin and Mike and I, we get that opportunity at training camp to see these coaches interact. We get chances to see that at practice. But can you talk a little bit about what Al Harris has done with this secondary group? Because, now, A, he's getting love from his cornerbacks, but B, to see, you know, Diggs do what he's done and now Bland. Like, this is, uh, this is uh, exceptional to see the work that he's worked with those guys. Well, uh, Al's played the game. Uh, he's played at a high level. Uh, you know, a, one of the great cornerbacks played there uh, for Mike at Green Bay. And, uh, so he understands uh, what these guys go through uh, day in and day out. And uh, certainly, uh, as a, you know, in terms of coaching them up, uh, knows what these guys need. Uh, certainly, uh, being out there, being a cornerback, you're on an island. And, uh, you know, you got to have a unique personality and unique confidence. Uh, to go out there and play. It's not always going to be perfect. You're going to give up uh, some plays. You just uh, hope it's not many, but uh, when you do, you got to have a short memory and get right back out there and get after it. Obviously, uh, you know, between Diggs, between Bland, uh, certainly bringing a guy like Stephon Gilmore into the room, uh, you know, a former defensive player of the year uh, who's had a ton of ball production. He's a pro's pro. Uh, you know, it's just a great room to be in right now. And then Jordan Lewis is a leader in himself, coming off a major injury and certainly doing a lot of good things, stepping up in a big way when uh, uh, when Diggs got hurt. And that way we were able to move Bland outside and uh, and, and let uh, Jordan Lewis step on up, and he's done a great job for us. You have told us time and again that talent acquisition is a 24-7, 365 job. Can you tell us anything about y'all's inquiries into Shaq Leonard. Will he be at the star tomorrow? And what kind of stuff do you want to learn at meetings like that? Well, the biggest thing is, like you said, we're always trying to get better. And, you know, when you're in a competitive situation, you don't like to talk a lot about it. Uh, uh, we're not the only team involved uh, as he's a free agent and uh, can go where he wants to go. So we've got to be, uh, you know, a little guarded and close to the vest. But, uh, you know, Shaq's a guy who's uh, had a lot of production and, uh, you know, certainly uh, Will and uh, his staff over there with uh, with Alex and uh, that group 
uh, you know, really do a good job of keeping up with these guys as they come free and uh, know where to where to get the information. So we'll just kind of see, uh, you know, how this thing ebbs and flows and uh, see ultimately if it's a, a good fit, one, for us uh, having him, and two, uh, in his mind, uh, are the Cowboys the right fit for him? This doesn't have to necessarily – be about Leonard because I know what you're saying about being guarded and everything like that but whenever you do have a player like that in the building and you know there's competition is there ever a discussion of hey let's make sure he does not leave this building without being a Dallas Cowboy <laughs> well you can always try that sometimes they're very upfront and transparent which we respect and uh, we've been able to change their mind a few times we did it with Lyle Collins when he was going to go take some more visits and we were able to get him signed up. But, uh, you know, sometimes they're pretty adamant about wanting to, uh, you know, make sure they know all their options and alternatives. And so we'll just have to see where this goes. And, uh, you know, we certainly have a lot of confidence in what the Cowboys bring to the table and uh, certainly have a great uh, environment out there at the star and uh, a lot of great players on our team that have come from other teams that, uh, uh, you know, know what it's like, uh, you know, other places versus what it's like here. So, you know, we always like our our situation in a competitive uh, uh, type of environment, but we'll see how it works out. Steven, how frustrating has it been? I know yesterday you didn't have a Cowboys game uh, paying attention to the Eagles-Buffalo game. Great NFL football game, but the Eagles come on top again the other day. Uh, Kansas City has a touchdown pass drop to beat Philadelphia. How frustrating has it been that the Cowboys do need a little bit of help from these other teams that they haven't been able to provide it? Well, it's a it's a big enough duty in the NFL to could you know to worry about you know your team and uh, what you can do something about. And certainly that's our our number one focus. You can become miserable and uh, get your eye off the target if you get too focused in on. Uh, what's going on around you. Don't get me wrong. We all pay attention. I know our fans do. Uh, certainly we do too. We watch those games uh, with great interest. But uh, at the end of the day, we can only control what we can control. And that's going out week in and week out, execute, being the very best team we can be. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, building and uh, getting better each week. And uh, it'll give us every opportunity to take care of our business when we get to the postseason. So. Uh, Like I said, it's just a a lot to uh, worry about if you start worrying about a whole lot more than uh, uh, the task at hand, which in our case right now are the Seahawks. Got our hands cut, our work cut out for us, our hands full, and uh, need to have a a really uh, good next couple of days of practice and get ready to play a big game on Thursday. What is what do you think the 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 biggest factor for Seattle against your Cowboys team right now? What do you, what do you think the biggest factor is for them? The thing that they're going to try and take advantage of? Well, I think the you know the biggest thing we have to do is to control what we can control, and that's go out and execute. I mean, they've got some really good players. Uh, Geno Smith, uh, since he's taken over that job out there, has done a great job. He's got great weapons. Uh, they. Uh, Pete Carroll always has that group playing good defense, and uh, I'm certainly uh, I'm certain they'll have a great game plan for us. And uh, you know he's always done a great job there with the Seahawks. So uh, we just got to go out and execute and do what uh, what we can do about it. And I know Dan's uh, going to have a great game plan for him, as as will Mike, and hopefully play good in all three phases, execute, and uh, good things will happen. Now, as we're talking about Mike McCarthy's game plan, the Cowboys use shift or motion on 76% of their snaps against Washington. That's a season high. We've had a lot of discussion. How much do you think this offense has changed as the year has gone along, or do you think it is a matter of just better execution? I think it's all the above. I think you evolve. I think the bye week was big for us when we did a lot of self you know. You know, I've seen this thing evolve, uh, you know, since the bye week. And uh, I think you get in there and you uh, have our defensive coaches look at what we're doing offensively and vice versa. And uh, I think that's paid off. At the same time, I think it's just uh, execution and evolving into what Mike and Coach Schottenheimer want to do and Dak getting his hands around it and then going out and executing. Uh, But I think it's all the above. And with that in mind, how much credit 
does, and I know credit's split up equally, but how much credit does Mike McCarthy get for evolving with this offense? Well, I think a tremendous amount. He's calling the plays. He's a big proponent. If you if you're gonna call it, you got to install it, and uh, he's evolving with this offense. And you know, when we played the 49ers, they're a big motion team, and you know, had a lot of success against us. And uh, you know, you have to look at where you know how other people are moving the ball, and uh, you know, that's just part of the NFL. It's a copycat league. You, you look at some things that uh, other teams do and have success with, and you see where it might be easy to uh, incorporate into what you're doing. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned, the motion, then, uh, you know, if that, that, that's something that as you really start to scout and see that it gives not only other teams but even our defense challenges, then you certainly want to look at it. Yeah, just before we let you go, Stephen, I did want to like tip the cap also to the analytics department for some of those adjustments. And is it one of those things where they turn in a huge book of stuff to McCarthy each week, or is it like here's the sheet? Uh, th- this stuff's gonna come see us whenever you're ready. Yeah, I think it's uh, you know you can do too you can have too much information okay. as we all know, and, and it'll swallow you up. But if you can, you know, really get in there, and I, you know, Mike's. Uh, you know, I don't sit in there with Mike and go through just exactly how he dissects those analytics. Other than I do know he's a big proponent uh, of analytics and certainly respects, uh, you know, the data that comes his way. And I know he has them organized it in a way that uh, is the most helpful for him. But obviously we're doing, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of good things on offense right now. And, I, uh, you know, my bet is that's going to continue to evolve. And. We're going to continue to execute. It's great to have all five of those offensive linemen uh, playing together week in and week out. I think that's made a huge difference uh, with Coach Solari. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, still got a lot of football left. We're past the halfway point. And uh, we all know this is always a grinder uh, when we play these two Thursdays back to back. And, uh, you know, we play Seattle and then we'll get a little, uh, you know, 10 days there to take a deep breath. And, see kind of uh, where we need to go from there. But it all starts with, uh, you know, doing what we have to do and doing what we need to do in terms of, a, uh, you know, a really solid game plan and executing against Seahawks. Appreciate the time very much, good sir. We'll catch up with you again next Monday. Sounds great, guys. Take care.